Hey folks, it's Bill Swift from Swift Canoe and Kayak and we're here to show you all the information you need to know about your solo canoe. This is an owner's manual video. How about that for a term? So your canoe will come with an invoice, whether from one of our stores or one of our dealers. Inside the package will be a pamphlet, which is a printed version of the owner's manual which has tons of information on it, inside and out. So please read through all of this. On the back side of it is going to be information on your particular boat. When you register this boat, you go to our website, go to the About Us tab, hit the Owner's Manual Registration, take a picture of your invoice and fill out this information upload it and your boat will be officially registered. Yay! So let's go over a solo canoe from end to end. This is a beautiful Prospector 14 with cherry interior and this boat has the carbon end caps. We drill holes in the end of the end caps guys not for you to put ropes in but they help drain the water out. At the end of a long day you turn your boat over the water will drain right out. This particular one has the black and gold carbon Kevlar trim and it's the carbon fusion laminate. Over time you may scratch and mark the gunnels up a little bit. You can very lightly sand them with a wet dry sandpaper and put more resin on them if you want to keep it nice and smooth over time. Very easy to stay on top of. This boat has the all cherry interior including the cherry detachable yoke. Now guys, when you use these yokes, when you put them on, don't crank and crank and crank them. Put them on so that they're snug. That's when the point when you wanna flip it up. When you do flip it up, I like to put one hand on either side on the gunnel and the yoke and put a lot of weight and just flip it right up. You just don't wanna take the yoke and just jam it as hard as you can. We want to take good care of these pins over time. Now when you're transporting the boat on your vehicle, always take anything detachable off the boat. So I take the yoke off and this particular boat has the multi-height seat pods with the detachable seat, which is a great option for those of you that ordered it. I take this off as well when I'm traveling. And a bonus of that, guys, is that when you lift the boat up without the yoke and seat on it, it's even lighter. You might get spoiled a little bit with that. Now, the boat right down, you see the side pod shape. You really don't need to do a lot of maintenance to these. And coming down to the back of the boat, we've got the float tanks. Now, let me show you these plugs here. The plugs will come out like this. When you're ready to use your boat, there's a rubber stopper that you twist and you turn in, and then you click it down. Now air expands and contracts with different temperatures. So if you ever see the tank puffing out or pulling in on the outside, just lightly pop the plug and you'll see the air will neutralize and then you can put it back in again. In the fall, if I'm done with the boat, I just take the plugs right out. Now on the very back of the boat, you'll notice this is the serial number. The last four numbers, digits, represent the month and the year that it was built. And this is permanently affixed to the boat. Now, what type of maintenance do you need to do to the boat? If you're ever in salt water or brackish water, I always rinse it off. The stainless steel hardware, the composite material, the wood, just give it a good rinse. Now the cherry on the inside, we use our Badger Wood Oil, which you can find on our Swift Outdoor Center web store. This is what we use on our paddles and the finish that we use on all of our handles, our yokes, our thwarts. So Joe, our camera guy who has some of our boats, loves to put a little bit of oil on the cloth and just rub it right in, going back and forth, and you'll see it just saturate right in. Let it sit for an hour or two and then wipe any excess off that you might see. 
It's good to do it a couple times a year, maybe once or twice more if you're storing the boat outside all the time. Now, the other thing you're going to want to do is we spray the outside with what's called Protectant 303. Again, you can buy this on our web store. This essentially is suntan lotion for your boat. All that I do with this when I'm doing my boats is I'll spray a little bit on and then I'll just start at one end. I do the gunnel, I do the end cap, and I wipe it to just past the halfway point. And guys, this is so easy to do. It's not like the old days of those car waxes where you just killed your shoulders trying to get everything off. You can also do the inside, the float tanks, you can put a coat on. Any side pods in the boat, you can put a coat on. You don't need to do it to the main interior section of the boat though. So a swift solo canoe with cherry interior, you've made a great purchase. If you show it some love every now and then, take good care of the wood, take good care and really shine it up on the outside, it's gonna show you a lot of love back. How about a couple of quick pointers, folks? So when I get into my solo boat, I always like to try to pull it sideways to a dock or the shore, put my weight right on the bow thwart, lean into the shore a little bit with my paddle, and then get right in the boat. Now the first time you get in the boat, you may hear a little bit of settling noise on the side pods. Don't panic, it happens. Everything's just getting accustomed and used to itself. This one's got kayak foot braces. I like to get the braces, either the kayak braces or the carbon foot bar set up right, a, right away. Now, I love to just roll the boat a little bit from side to side to first get used to it. And the, all the David Yost design boats are a little rounded in the China area. You're gonna find them a little playful. This Prospector 14 has so much stability to it though. With a multi-height pod system, it's really fun to use with a canoe paddle in the upper position. I like to use a C-stroke a lot where you can slide the paddle right back up in the water, do another stroke. And we're gonna be doing some on-water demonstrations of this that you'll be able to check out. Now, a lot of people love to take a canoe paddle and a kayak paddle. And I love these particular paddles. This is a Werner adjustable. It's got this, what's called lever lock, where you can adjust both the angle and the length of the paddle. We have these on our web store as well. And I love to paddle where the water from the drip rings drips outside the boat. So if I'm getting a little wet, I'll adjust the paddle a little bit longer. So, with a kayak paddle, this boat just tracks so beautifully. It's absolutely a joy to paddle. So whichever swift solo canoe you've decided to buy, you're going to absolutely love it. And hopefully these pointers are help you out a little bit. Here is a Cruiser 15.8 with a performance solo canoe package with a nice bucket seat, foot brace system to it. It's got all carbon interior. So there's a little bit different maintenance on this one. We're not gonna oil the carbon. We're gonna use the same material, the Protectant 303 that we used on the hull, the float tanks, the end caps of the other boat. So what I like to do is just lightly spray a little bit on a rag and then go over all the interior carbon parts. Wipe it on the thwarts. Wipe it on the handles. Good time to do the float tank also if you haven't. And then you can do the carbon foot bar and the struts running up and down. And then this is a really cool system, guys, if you ordered it. This carbon box on the bottom, you can rub the Protectant 303 all over this. The slide bars, beautiful, beautiful setup. Now how about, I'll give you a few pointers if you did get this particular version. The bucket seat on these cruiser canoes fits me so nicely. And typically when you paddle a boat like this, you really turn your body quite a bit if you're using a bench shaft paddle. 
and I find this bucket seat is super comfortable to use with it. Now, another neat thing about this is this foot brace system is adjustable right from where I'm sitting. So I can easily make this longer that quickly. If I want, I just pull on the buttons. I can shorten it up. It's really good to keep your knees bent a bit. It really allows you to put a lot more into it. If you keep your legs locked, it's not as comfortable. You're not gonna get as much stability and performance with each stroke. If you keep your knees bent, it really allows you to move with the boat more, so to speak. Now, a lot of people also love to use a kayak paddle with this particular boat, like we showed you with the Prospector 14. And because of the s gunnels where they're pulled in way on the sides here, you can really do a very efficient kayak stroke in this particular boat. Now, a super cool feature of this, guys, is that if you feel that you're running a little stern heavy, little bow heavy, whichever it may be, you can just hold on to your paddle. You can scooch your butt up a little bit and you can move this whole sliding seat system a little bit. What we used to do in the early days on a marathon canoe race, we'd throw two, three, four cups of water in the boat. We'd wait to see where it went in the boat and then we'd adjust the trim so that the water kind of just stayed right in the middle while we paddled. You eventually get to know the feel of when the boat is running real flat, real level in the water. So when you get used to your cruiser, you're absolutely going to love it. In whichever swift solo canoe you chose, have lots of fun with it. Cheers.